Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Danielle, just in case you didn't know. Now you do. Uh, and today we're going to talk about some plus size sewing tips because it is not the same to sew regular clothes versus plus size clothes. There's actually a few things that you need to keep in mind, especially if you started out sewing for thin people. Um, then you will probably find there are some significant changes that you need to make to your sewing routine when you're making the clothes for bigger people. If you are a bigger person and you are sewing for yourself for the first time but you've been making clothes for other people for years, you will notice a difference. Um, I'm going to get into a few things that are different as well as some things that you can do to improve your life with sewing. All right, let's get into it. So my first tip is to remember that it will take more fabric to make clothes for plus size. I don't, like in theory, you know this, but when you're so used to being able to make a skirt with less than two meters of fabric, or a pair of pants with less than two meters of fabric, or a dress with three meters of fabric, or less, um, then it becomes very different when you suddenly aren't buying enough fabric. Often I will buy five meters or yards of fabric. Um, my fabric store closest to me sells in meters. I'm in Canada. But if you buy from like a fabric store in Toronto, they sell by the yard. It's only three inches difference. It's not going to make much of a big deal, but it it can be really a struggle when you need, um, you know, significantly more fabric just to cover another body. And I found this a lot when I went from making clothes in fashion school where we didn't go over a size 10, which was not really a size 10, it was more like a size 6. Um, it was a fashion size 10. Uh, and suddenly I was making clothes for myself, for my sister. I wasn't buying enough fabric. It just, it was a struggle. Um, but now I'm pretty used to it and I always buy extra. Because uh, at the very least I'll have some leftovers and I can do something else with it. That's fine having leftovers. Not having enough is never okay. And it's always disappointing. My tip number two is measure yourself. Know your measurements. Get a friend to help you. I have an entire video on how to measure yourself. I will link it and put it in the cards, whichever. It's probably this side. Um, I don't know. I'll put it in the cards so you can go watch it. It is key to know your measurements. Write them down. Memorize them. You will need to know them. Along the same line, don't go by the sizes written on the pattern packages. So when you're buying a store-bought pattern, when you're buying one online, don't go by the sizes they put there. Go by the finished measurements. You want your finished measurements to match as closely to the measurements they're offering because they make up their own sizing and it's not going to match what's in the store. I have bought patterns where I've made my size number and it was like six sizes too big. I've bought patterns where I've made my size number and it was way too small. You need to go by the measurements and if they don't make the pattern in your size, it is still a good idea to look at the measurements because there may be only a small difference that you can just make the pattern a little bigger or a little smaller. You should never feel like the pattern has to stay exactly the way it's shown in the pictures or on the pattern piece. You can, if say um, you're more of a pear shaped body where you have big hips and butt, but your top is quite small. Well, if you're making a dress, it's gonna be really difficult to find a dress that fits your hips, but also fits your top well. So don't be afraid to blend between sizes and fit your the pattern to yourself. And as well, don't be afraid to add or take away things. 
So let's say you, this pattern has no pockets, but you need pockets because pockets are just essential, okay? Maybe not in dresses because they kind of like pull things down, but in pants, if you're making pants and they don't have pockets, don't waste your time. Put pockets in. So you need to be able to add pockets, but you they're not included in the pattern. So it's pretty easy to make a pocket pattern and you can add that in with very little trouble and it won't affect the overall fit of your pants as long as you're following the measurement. Now, if you have been sewing for smaller people before or all your life like I have, um one adjustment to make is that it's going to take you longer to make these things. It's going to take you longer to cut them. It's going to take you longer to sew it all together. And you will need to account for that because there's more fabric there. And there's more seams to sew. There's just more. And um, it will take you longer. It will be harder to put through your sewing machine because there's going to be more fabric. Um, just take your time and you know, slow and steady wins the race, basically. Um, just don't rush it because it would really suck to get to the very end and realize you've installed a, sle a sleeve backwards or something like that and now you have to take it out and, um, you know, you thought you were finished. Been there, done that. All of these sort of tips are things I've learned along the way and experienced. <laughs> this, you may think, goes without saying, but remember to account for boobs. Generally on plus size people, boobs are bigger. They also take up more room. They may be saggier. They may sit in a different place. You may have more side boob. You may, you know, have extra back fat on like your upper back. These are all things you need to account for when you're making a pattern or when you are altering something. I learned as a rule of thumb on the blocks we used in school that from the nipple to the bottom of the breast is three inches. Now, I've measured my own boob and that is not the case. There is significantly more boob between my nipple and the bottom of my boob and so it you can't go by these general rules of thumb anymore you need to make sure you're always measuring which you'd never think that you actually need to measure how far your nipple is from like basically your rib cage but sometimes you do because you need to account for where that fits in your clothes just the same as you can't just like lay a, t a top on the table and like cut it off and assume it's going to cover your boobs to have a crop top you need to put it on first mark where you need to cut so that your boobs will be covered if you want them to be covered if you don't want them to be covered then not a problem but i have made hmm, three or four dresses before where i was like oh i added an extra inch for the space and um, it was not enough. It meant the empire line of the dress was like, I don't know, an inch or more on my boob, which is not the look I was going for at all. So learn from my mistakes. Account for boobs. If the person has like no boobs or very small boobs, fine. Still measure. It should also be noted that you need to account for big butts and fat stomachs, okay? It's just something that is not accounted for in patterns. Everyone assumes that you are an hourglass shape when you're buying a plus size pattern. So you definitely need to measure over your tummy to where you want the hem to go and over your butt to where you want the hem to go. It may mean that you need to have to cut the skirt or the dress longer because if you have a big butt, okay, it is going to hike up your hem in the back. So it's going to look like your hem at the back goes like this and then the front goes low. We don't want a low high hem. We want a straight across hem or a high low on purpose. The same if you have no butt 
and lots of gut. You know what? It, I am that, okay? I have no butt, lots of gut. The thing is, it's going to mean that your skirt is low in the back and high in the front, and maybe high enough that you're actually uncomfortable with it. You might have been trying to make a mini skirt, but because you haven't accounted for your gut, you now have a skirt that flashes the entire world your vagina. And that's probably not what you want to wear out of the house. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. If it's not on purpose, account for your gut. When cutting your pattern, you may have to actually account for um, getting creative with how you cut things. If you buy a fabric that is, say, 45 inches because you've just fell in love, you're probably going to need at least an extra meter just for, like, placing things. Because when you get fabric that's 54 or 60 inches wide, you can fit things on the fold, generally. Um, but you can't do that with a 45 inch fabric. You will have to open it flat and creatively lay things out and you'll have to cut things in two sections. Um, for example, you know this, the circle skirt tutorial I did forever ago when I first started my channel? I will link it in the description and put it in a card somewhere. Um, in that tutorial I say that you can fold your fabric in a certain way so that you can actually cut the circle out and it becomes a full circle. That only works if you are skinny. I hate to say it like that, but it's the only way it works. So for that, for example, you would just make the circle skirt pattern piece, add seam allowance, and then cut it out one quarter at a time. You have to add the seam allowance because previously you weren't gonna need seam allowance. And if you don't add it, you're going to end up with a skirt that is two inches smaller than your actual measurement, and then you're going to be sad because it doesn't fit. Uh, you should also keep in mind that you really shouldn't use a 45 inch fabric for a circle skirt because in no way, shape, or form, if you are my size, is any of that pattern piece going to fit on there. You have to actually physically sew pieces of fabric together in order to get enough fabric. To then cut the piece. So just use wide fabric if you can and um, cut things. I would suggest like laying out your fabric and then placing all of your pattern pieces down first before you pin and cut things. As you get to integral spots in your sewing process, stop and try it on. Be, be careful of like armholes and neck holes, you don't want to be stretching those out. But if you're looking at it and you're like, oh, I'm not really sure this is going to fit me, try it on. Because you may be pleasantly surprised or you may be able to stop and fix the issue right at that moment in time. It's much easier to fit something as you're going along than if you were to wait till the very end and then have to take it all apart again. Now, as a plus size person, I've been personally victimized by polyester. It is gross and I don't understand why... Fat people who sweat way more than normal people, not normal people, than thin, fit people, um, they are then relegated to wear only polyester or only non-natural materials. And I take the opportunity when I'm sewing to use more natural materials. I think that if you're going to put in all of this time, you are going to be better off to buy cotton and linen and wool and actually natural materials that will help you stay cool, will help you stay warm. Whichever they're supposed to do, they will last a lot longer and they will be easier for you to work with because polyester is a bitch to sew, let's just say it. But it will also be good for you to actually wear things that feel nice and feel luxurious. And I cannot say that about wearing polyester, that's for sure. Use this opportunity well, spend a bit more money on your fabric, and get something that's going to last you years versus a few wears. It, you're not making fast fashion here, you're making something that's going to last. 
This is also an opportunity for you to make clothes that you actually want to wear. You're not in a store where there's a set number of garments and you're in an emergency and you need something now. You have the opportunity to take your time, find a pattern that you love, that you can use over and over again, make classic pieces that you're going to be able to wear for years to come. You are essentially making a luxury garment. Think about it like this. You're not going to go and buy a blazer from Balmain or Balmain or whatever you want to call it. They have epically awesome blazers. They don't make them in my size, so I just drool over them. But you're not going to buy a blazer from them for, I don't know, $1,000 or more and then wear it three times and then throw it in the trash unless you literally wipe your butt with money. That's not going to happen. What you're going to do is you're going to wear that beautiful blazer on a regular basis, maybe once a month, once every couple of months, but you're going to have it for years to come. That's going to be the same case with these clothes. You are making luxury items for yourself. And so you should treat it that way. Make something that you can wear for a long time. Make something that you are actually going to enjoy wearing and you're not just making because it's like what you have to have. I would stick it with making classic pieces that will last you a long time that you'll want in your closet for a while and stay away from trend pieces. If there's something that you really want that isn't available in plus sizes but is more of a trendy item, sure, make it. But I wouldn't spend a lot of time and money on it. Just make it, wear it, and move on. But spend real time and real money on making things that will last you a really long time. Like I said before, you are going to be working with a lot more fabric than you're used to if you've been sewing for smaller people or smalling, sewing for your kids or sewing for everybody else but yourself. Um, what you should keep in mind is that you just take your time, easily feed through the clothes through the sewing machine, tuck your the extra stuff off to the side, don't get overwhelmed with the volume of fabric that you're working with. Just do one step at a time, don't look too far ahead, and don't be overwhelmed by the amount of fabric that you're working with. My actual number one tip for plus size sewing though is to find a base pants pattern, t-shirt pattern, and dress shirt pattern that you like, will fit your measurements, you've made before, and you know fit you properly, and you've altered the pattern to fit you perfectly, and then trace those into pattern card. You can see behind me here, these are my pattern cards. And I have them in a variety of sizes because I make for a variety of people, not just myself. I also have my school blocks back there that are itty bitty. Um, and so you make these base patterns, which are called blocks. And what you do is you save those and then you can make any pattern you could ever want off of those. I could also recommend getting a leggings pattern because then you can make knit bottoms, like knit pant bottoms, out of that as well. Um, so you'd end up with two pant, like two bottoms and two tops. And then what you do is you just take those, trace them off onto tissue or um, like a pattern paper. And then from there, you can alter the shape of it to be different things. So I have a t-shirt pattern that I use regularly to make dresses and other shirts and things like that. Um, I have a legging pattern that we will be working with very soon. Um, I'm going to try and find other recommendations for that because the company has gone out of business. I've had the pattern so long. So um, I this is just like the best way to make clothes for yourself is to find these block patterns that you can use over and over and over again to just create an entire wardrobe of clothes. You don't have to be constantly buying new patterns. You can definitely do that. It saves you a lot of time, but you may never be happy with exactly how it fits. If you find these base patterns that fit you exactly the way you want and you're used to working with them, you will be able to go so far with the stuff that you can make. 
Alright everybody, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed these tips and tricks. If you have any of your own, I'd love to hear them in the comments. Remember, I do try and answer the comments for the first 24 hours at least. It's usually longer. So if you leave me a comment, you will get an answer back. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I hope that you want to hang out here all the time with me. Uh, please give this video a like if you liked it. If you didn't, that's okay. Uh, and I will see you guys soon. Bye!